Hello, this is Chris Crawford with Chris Crawford Knives, and I'm going to do a demonstration on how I mill the liners of a folding knife. And so, um, by milling the liners of a folding knife, basically what you're doing is you're cutting a relief around the pivot. And what this allows is when the blade opens and closes, it allows the, the blade to pivot without the tang of the blade scraping the sides of the liner. And so, um, by doing so, it eliminates rub marks. Like sometimes you may have a folding knife and you may look at it and see rub marks on the tang. Now, um, you don't see these with knives that have washers because the way a washer works is the purpose of the washer is you know you have your your um, I guess your your back piece or your your spring on your slip joint or your lock bar on the lock back or whatever whatever that that piece that runs down the the back of the knife whatever thickness that is minus the thickness of the two washers is how thick your blade is right so you, so the your blade plus the two washers that thickness equals the thickness of your spring or whatever that, that back piece uh, across the top of the knife is. Now, because of the washers, the blade is not going to be rubbing the liners or the handles or whatever. Well, basically, for, by milling your liners, you're, you're basically cutting the integral uh, washer into your liner, and that's, that's the purpose of it. And so, I'm going to be demonstrating this on this Harbor Freight Mini Mill with a rotary table. And this is a new rotary table. I'll say more about that in just a minute. Um, but the reason I'm putting this together is because I posted a picture of a couple of liners that I milled off this rotary table and so they were the, you know, the first two that came off there and I was really pleased at, as, at how well this rotary table did. Now the reason for that, the reason I was posting those pictures is because I had a rotary table before this. I had one that I had gotten off eBay. It was uh, made in Pakistan. It was uh, um, around 70 or 80 bucks or whatever like that and it was not good so i'll just say it was it gave me issues early, you know from from early on now um i know there are some people who use those and have good luck with them and it could have just been the one that i had it could have been bad um but anyway this this one works so much better well one of the problems i was having with it is that there was a lot of play in the table so in the top of the table so uh, like this one has no play there's there's just a little I mean a tiny bit back and forth which you're gonna have because of the because of the the screw drive in there but this has no up and down play with the other one did and so when I was milling something like um, G10 or um, my card or something like that it wasn't an issue because the stuff was pretty soft even when I was doing nickel silver because nickel, nickel silver was still relatively soft uh, it was a little more difficult I had, a, I had a little harder issue I'd have to tighten a screw down to try to get some of that slack out and, and I would kind of have to hold it as I went one direction to try to keep it from grabbing but I was able to get by well when I moved to working with stainless liners it was pretty much a no-go with that old um, rotary table because stainless was harder, I, I'm not sure, but this is what I was thinking was happening. Because the stainless was harder, the mill was grabbing, would periodically grab the stainless because of the rotary table. So when I was turning it like this, it wasn't a nice smooth rotation. When I turned it like this, it would kind of wobble a little bit. And I think it would go up and grab. Now this is exaggerated, but you get the point. Um, the, the mill would grab it and it would jerk it and it would cut a deeper spot and it would basically ruin the liner. So after this happened uh, this last time, I'll, I'll say I did out of six liners, I was able to get one that worked um, on, that, on that other table and that was really kind of finagling it. Well after this last time, man I took that thing out and trash was going out the next day, I went ahead and put it in the can so it would be taken away and I would not be tempted to use it the next time. And I ordered this one from Little Machine Shop and it was about four times as much. But, uh, but I could not be happier with this. And so uh, we'll, we'll get a closer look at this in a minute. Uh, one thing I want to say about this operation is this is not something that I came up with. Um, it is a conglomeration of tips and hints that I've gotten from other knife makers. Now before going to using a rotary table for milling my liners, I would mill my liners for many years and also use washers sometimes as well, but I would, when I did mill my liners, I, would, I had a little fit up block and I'd put the liners on it and I'd draw the area that I wanted to mill and I would just, you know, using the, the mill, I would just kind of cut it in a, kind of a square out around there. Uh, and it worked pretty good, but this works, this works so much better. And uh, as I was transitioning to going from just cutting, cutting it out using the 
you know, just the regular milling table to using a rotary table, uh, I would run into issues and I'd ask questions online and people would be kind enough to help me. So again, this is not just my method, but kind of a, a conglomerate of different people's methods and the things that they showed me. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at how this works. All right, before we get to milling, what we want to do is prepare our liners. And so I took some Dicom Steel Blue layout fluid and just kind of painted the back side of these liners to give me a reference point. And I've got a height gauge here, and I've already got it set. And so really, I'm, all I'm going to do here is just mark how far I want this uh, the cut to go to. So you can see it right there. And so this allows me to do both of them. So I'm kind of pushing down on my liner right here just to get that end down since it's not even. And so this gives us our reference of how far we're going to go to in the back. So this is my rotary table. Um, I have it fastened down to my, my milling machine. And uh, if you're not familiar with rotary table, it's really you just you got a handle that you turn and when you do the the table rotates. Now the rotary table is only made up of this base part and this table part right here. Now I know this video is going to be a little bit backwards because I already have this set up, but we're going to do the milling and then after that I'm going to break this down and show you kind of how I set this up and also show you how I centered this block to the center of the rotary table. All right, so we'll, we'll talk about all that a little bit later. So if you're, if you're thinking about that, just, just don't worry about it at this point. So this, this block right here is something that I made. Um, it doesn't look that great, but it, it functions very well. Um, I made this block. It was just a block of steel, and I put it on my surface grinder and surfaced it so that it would be perfectly flat and parallel. And I put some holes in it and ran some bolts, and so these bolts are going into the table of the, of the rotary table. Now these two bolts are tightened down, right? So that's what really fixes it on there. These two are a little bit loose and this is what's going to hold my handle material in place. And then right in the center I have a, a pivot hole and um, make sure the camera's pointed that. And then this is basically just a 332nd pin. I took some steel and drilled a hole in the middle of it, stuck the pin through and soldered it. And so I'll show you how this works. It basically acts as a hold down around the pivot. And so that's, that's what I have going on there. So let me get this turned around. So right here is a set screw. And so inside, I'm not going to be able to get it out without turning the vise down, but this hole okay so so this this hole for the pivot um, goes goes down really really deep this hole let's see get around here this hole runs all the way to the pivot and it's tapped and so inside here what you don't see is a little brass rod and the reason I use the brass rod is because when I put this screw on here the screws not the screw is not long enough to go to the to the hole and so I got this little brass rod. Well basically what this allows me to do is to put the liner in there and then I can put the set screw in and when the screw is tightened down the um, brass pin gets tight against this pivot and so this doesn't, it, it won't come up. Now I would tighten it with a Allen wrench when I get ready to do it but basically it, it holds it down and so I can loosen this up and I can get my pivot out. So this is basically the parts of this fixture. So let me grab a liner and we'll do two sides. We'll do the left liner and the right liner. And um, if you're familiar with milling, you have, if I have my terms right, you have conventional milling and you have climb milling. I think that's right. And we're going to do one liner with conventional milling and then we're going to do one liner with climb milling. And I'll tell you why. Well, the reason is because, let me get this end mill in frame here. So this is a one half inch um, five fluted carbide end mill. And it does not like to plunge too good. And so uh, this will make more sense in a minute. So let me go ahead and get this set up. 
And so we will do, let's see, if I'm going to do, we're going to do this liner first. And so this would be our right hand liner. So we'd go on the knife like this. So I'll put it under there, put my pivot in. All right, get it about centered. And it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to hold this down, tighten it. Okay, so that is in there. And then tighten these bolts. Now, this is something I'm, I'm sure the camera's not picking up, but um, I've got my milling table loose. When I say loose, just not locked down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down with my cutter to make sure that when I rotate all the way around that I'm cutting. Like I don't want to run off my liner. If I run off my liner, I've not cut close enough to my pivot. Now, different people do different things. What I like to do is to leave as big of a washer as I can, right? So I like to get as far away from my pivot as I can with, while still staying on the liner, all right? And so I've got this little dip in the liner here. That's a low spot, like right there. And then when I come out here near the end, you know, I want to leave myself some room to, to clean up my, uh, my handle and, and all. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go too deep. So anyway, I've got this uh, ready to go. And we'll be rotating this way. So I, I think this way we'll be doing, if the, if the things, if the mill's rotating this way, we'll be doing conventional milling. And so it's going to cut a whole lot easier this way than the other way. But I get it, I don't get it all the way to the corner. I get it very close to the corner. And let me grab my glasses. We'll get this thing fired up. Now, I'm going to drop this mill only about two to three thousandths at a time. And I like to go between seven and ten thousandths uh, total cut on this liner. All right. And I've got a DRO up here that you can't see on, on here. But let me go around and get this, get my um, fine feed locked in on my mill. All right. All right, I got my fine feed locked in. I got my um, table in place where I want it. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and lock my main, my main table so that it doesn't move back and forth. And the reason is because I wanna keep my table exactly where it is so that when I go to do the other liner, it'll, it'll be in the right place. All right, so I'm gonna fine feed this down and get it almost to touching. Yeah, it's got a little bit of light clearance in there, and then we're going to get this going. So what I want to do is go down until that thing just touches, and then I'm going to zero out my DRO. Now I'm running this with this carbide end mill at about 1,500 RPM. I found that I was, I was doing the nickel silver slower. I was doing that at maybe, I don't know, maybe 800. But this um, stainless, really, it just seems to work better running at a faster speed. All right, so I'm gonna start bringing it down until it just barely touches and I should be able to hear it. Now I don't, I don't wanna go all the way up into this corner yet. All right there, I just touched. I'm gonna zero out my DRO. I'm gonna go about two thousandths on this first cut. Well, that, that jumped a little on me. I went a little further. But let's go ahead and cut it. I ended up going down five. And I'm gonna mill this till I get to that line that I cut. So there we are right there. Come back around. Now I have not gone all the way to this corner. I'm gonna do that at the very end. So I'm at five right now. I'm probably going to drop it another maybe two, but I'm going to do it a little bit slower than I did that, that time. I did it kind of fast. A 
Well, that time I dropped at four, so I'm at nine right now, which will be fine. I like to go between seven and 10. All right, and I just want to make sure I go as far as I did before. I think that's going to be good. Now this time when I come back to this corner, I want to take it all the way to the corner and I'm going to grab my optivisors just so I can see exactly where that corner is. All right, as, I'm, as I'm approaching the corner, I'm going to slow it down. And I'm going to take it right to that corner. Let's see how it is. Maybe just a little bit more. Maybe a little more. Try not to overshoot it. Um, if you overshoot it, it's not a problem. You just, the, the thing is, you need to make both liners match. And the easiest way for me to match it is just to go straight to the corner. Now, these liners already had together and profiled, so the liners match each other. So if I go to that corner, the exact corner, and stop, then the, then the cuts will match. I just need a little more. And get around where I can see it. Yep, that looks pretty good. Alright, so we're going to raise this up. Take a look at it there. And that looks pretty good. So I ended up going down nine thousandths. Now I'm going to tell you why this jumped. This, this jumped a little bit when I was going down because I've got some slack in, uh, in this, this head, the head of this mill. And what I need to do is I need to tighten up, um, tighten up the mill. All right, well, here's my liner. And so let's go ahead and loosen it, get it off. Now off camera, I took my shop back and vacu vacuumed up all the little uh, chips. So I'd, I'd actually already loosened this set screw as well. So we can get it off here. And uh, hopefully you can see that. It did a, did a really nice job on it. Now, I intended to take about three small cuts, maybe two to three thousandths each. I ended up doing a five thousandth cut and a four thousandth cut. Uh, and the reason is because my head jumped a little bit on me. Um, the, I think I need to do a little work on my mill and tighten up, the, tighten up the head a little bit. But to prevent that from happening again on this next one, I'm going to just... The, the screws that you can tighten to lock the head into place, I'm gonna tighten those, not so much that the head won't move, but that it's, it takes a lot more effort to move it, and so we'll, we'll do that, and that'll help. All right, so that's that, that one. Now this one here, um, let me get it into place. This one's gonna be a little bit different. Now if you had, um, if you had a liner with a bolster, let me, let me find one, and I'll show you kind of just tell you what we're going to do on that. I don't think I, I don't think I have one I can show you. So anyway, if you have a liner with a bolster, I put the bolster on first and then I have these little blocks right here. So like if, if the bolster is on this side, I'd put this little block under there. So you, this, this block plus the bolster and then lock the whole thing under there like that and then it's it's even. So that's, that's how you would do that. All right, let's get everything tight. Tighten these down. All right. Get this set. Now my, my table, my milling table has not moved so that when I mill this, it should match the other one. All right, let me come around here and get it locked into place. And start getting it. Getting it low. I guess I could have lowered a little bit before I locked it into place, but this won't take too long. All right, now, as I mentioned before about conventional and climb milling, I, I hope I have those terms right. 
the, the mill is going to be turning this way. And so it's going to mill easier when I'm turning the, the wheel this way. However, this time we're going to climb mill. We're going to, we're going to be turning this the opposite direction. The reason is this end mill does not like making plunge cuts too well. All right, so like if we came all the way around to where we're going to stop, like right here, and we made a plunge cut, then we could turn it to this way and do conventional milling, but it is not like a plunge cut. So what it seems to like better, it seems to like climb milling without doing a plunge cut better than it likes conventional milling after doing a plunge cut. And so basically we're just going to do the same thing here we did before. So let me tighten, um, excuse me for reaching across, but I'm just going to tighten this head up a little bit. And then I'm also going to tighten up this other set. And not so tight that I can't move it, but tight enough where it should help the head not to, uh, not to jump. And so making sure I'm not on there. We'll get, get zoomed in here again, and then we'll do this side. All right, here we go. Go about 1500. And bring it down until it touches. Now it should be about the same. This is a lot harder to bring down because I've got those, I've got that head locked. In fact, I may loosen it just a little. This should prevent it from jumping on me. So there I'm touching right there. So I'm going to zero that out. Now I'm not really back to the corner. Uh, I'm going to go down about two thousandths. So that reg registering two there. And I'm going to back it up a little bit. Not all the way to my corner. I'm going to do that last. And then we'll go forward with it. So this is about a two thousandths cut right here. Now it's getting a little more choppy in here as I'm climb milling into this full area. I get to my line and we'll roll it back. Plus two, go down a couple more. I think I'll go down about three that time. So we're right now at five. Now, I do like making the shallower cuts when I'm doing the climb milling. So we're going to go two more to seven. And then on the next pass, we'll finish out at nine by adding two more. Now I'm stopping just shy of the line, just like I'm stopping just shy of the corner. So on this next pass, I'll bring it to the line, and then as I roll it back, I'll bring it to the corner. So we'll go two more. So we're at nine now. And it really helped locking my milling head up here, or tightening it up so that it didn't uh, want to jump on me. Just a little more. All right, I'm gonna bring it back to the corner. And I'm gonna switch my glasses out to my optivisors. 
and get down in here and really see that corner. I think that'll do it right there. Check my corner. Yep, I think that'll get it right there. All right. Disengage that. And we'll get it, I'll get this cleaned up and taken out and we'll take a final look at it. Here are the liners after they've been finished and they match. And so if I put these together, you should be able to see where it's cut out there. Getting the light just right. And it runs out at the top, right at the corner, as you would expect. And so all in all, uh, they turned out really well. Okay, when this video started, I intended to, after milling the liners, show you, uh, take this apart and show you how I went about making this block or, or, and how I go about centering it on here and setting up and all that stuff. But uh, this video went a little longer than I thought it would and I need to get some other things done. So I'm gonna cut it right here and I will pick up maybe in the next few days or so or next week, uh, try to get a video with more information just on how to make the block and, and the different things, how to center it on there for the rotation and, um, and then we'll go from there. So hopefully this video gives you enough information to know how to use a rotary table to mill the liners and cut a recess in the liners for your folding knife. So I hope you've enjoyed it, thanks.